Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Today, we are joined by Ozzy Wallach, the Chief Educational and Research Officer of the Oil Field Workers Trade Union of Trinidad and Tobago. The workers of the OWTU are on the verge of a historic achievement and will soon take over the factory in which they work and run it on their own. Ozzy, to start with, could you just give a brief history of the company and the workers' movement? Yeah. Well, thank you for the opportunity to share this is indeed historic experience. Um, it's important to note that in the past, in our colonial past, the oil companies that were in Trinidad and Tobago were mainly multinationals. And it was really oh, through the calls and the struggle of the workers themselves that we have had the nationalization of, in, uh, of, of our oil industry, both in terms of production, but also in terms of refining. Uh, the refinery that, uh, Trinidad and Tobago has been uh, operating for almost 100 years. But of course, the plant has been upgraded over a period of time. And a, the workers' movement has been very, very active to ensure uh, that we protect and defend the national patrimony of Trinidad and Tobago. And when you have a major sector, such as the energy sector, um, being sold out, literally, to private interests, we felt that at this moment necessary for workers to take a stand and step in in order to protect, defend and guarantee that the national patrimony stays with the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And what are the latest developments in the, uh, in the issue right now? Because I think the, com the union is on the verge of forming a separate company to take over this but thing. The, the union actually has already uh, established a separate company oh. and is actually in the process of preparing for a uh, bid. A, for the refinery. And it, it, just to be clear, what, how we see it ideologically, this is about workers' ownership. It is how workers can take the control and own assets uh, in order to protect it from private interest, in order to protect it uh, for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. So that is why, what makes this move particularly historical. And this is why we think in this particular moment in time, this step is necessary. Now remember, the government has closed down the company and they said that they're going to sell it. But sell it to whom? And in, and, and in the end, we're talking about energy sovereignty. Uh, how would we maintain our sovereignty and our independence as a country if an important resource such as fuel ends up in the hands of private interest or even worse, ends up in the hands of a multinational? external to Trinidad and Tobago. And this is why we feel we felt it necessary to take this step. And you also work in the area of education and research. So could you describe the process of actually talking to workers while taking this step, as in it's such a huge step, the workers actually gunning for management over there. It's a massive step. So what are the kind of processes that took place in organizing? Well, first of all, you have to have um, a lot of mobilization meetings to meet with the workers even before the closure and after the closure, to, in order to continually give a feedback to the workers, but also to get the workers feeling a sense of patriotism to defend this important asset by taking ownership. So it, it, the mobilization, mass meetings is absolutely critical. It's, it, it, in other words, this is about how the working class can challenge the status quo by protecting national assets and the national patrimony from the hands of the elite few. And what has been the response of the state to this move by the workers? Well, the state um, has made the offer. So once the proposal is completed and submitted, it will be interesting to see how the state will respond. We are of the view the state may not be so interested to uh, give it to the workers because, of course, they would like they would prefer to give it to their elite, uh, the elites. But we f we feel by having a mass mobilization, having a mass education, and just to mention, it's not only um, information and education in terms of the workers, but also the general population. You see, a move like this will also require the support of communities. It will require the support of working people across Trinidad and Tobago, not only workers in the uh, energy sector. And the final question, uh, we are in Venezuela right now to express solidarity with the Bolivarian Revolution. So how does the working class of uh, Trinidad and Tobago actually see this issue? Well, I can tell you, as we speak right now, you have the social movements of organized uh, demonstration where they've gathered outside the Venezuelan embassy and will be marching onto the U.S. embassy in order to express what we see as uh, a, a to keep this region as a zone of peace. Because for workers, we don't need aggression, imperialist aggression um, in our region, and especially 
Remember, Venezuela is very close to Trinidad and Tobago, so there will be a knock-on effect. And I don't. And, and what I'm sure about is that workers uh, do not want to have their lives disrupted because you have a powerful um, neighbor to the north wanting the resources, the natural resources of our neighbor to the south. Thank you, Ozzy. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch.